This is my island in the sun Where my people have toiled since time begun I may sail on many a sea her shores will always be home to me. Good evening, people of Seba. It is my pleasure to come to you on behalf of the Whipham Party as chairman of the Whipham Party to give you an update as to what has been taking place since uh, the referendum in 2004 and the negotiations that, we, that the government of Seba has been having with uh, the Netherlands when I was commissioner up until 2007 and the present government after 2007. Uh, many times I, I see things in the paper, I hear people talking on the radio who are deliberately trying to confuse you uh, and to set you up against the Dutch as if there was another option, as if there was another alternative. There's no other alternative. If I should refer back to the referendum, uh, you will recall that when we had a referendum, I got a, a lot of criticism because in July of 2004, as Commissioner of Constitutional Affairs at the time, I put out a, um, a pamphlet and there were people that said, as Commissioner, I should not give advice to people on where to vote. Uh, I felt that that was my duty, my obligation. The whole referendum, I carried it uh, on my own personal political strength, on my own personal political convictions, my experience that I had had with the Netherlands and Tilly since I started out in politics in the 1960s. I did this because I wanted all of those who could vote, and I also made it possible via the Island Council that those that were 16 and over could vote. Also that uh, those who had lived here for five years or more uh, with foreign nationality, that they could vote. So we made it as, as democratic as possible and the end result was that 86% of the people voted for option A. Um, at the time I gave the explanation what option A was all about. Uh, we had, uh, as I said, the, the, the pamphlet that I issued, uh, I'll read parts of it for you so we can re recall what went down with the referendum. Also, uh, you will recall that the referendum was supervised by the United Nations. A gentleman came here, we had four options in the beginning, he said no, under the United Nations rules, only three options are possible. One is integration, the other is um, status quo remaining the same, on, and the third one is independence. Uh, my party, the Wilhelm Party, chose for integration with Holland. Uh, at the time we explained that we wanted a status similar, uh, something like uh, a known status in the area, which is the status Anguilla has with England. Uh, we have not strayed from that part. The status will be something similar, it will not be exactly the same, but it will be a status where we will remain Dutch. And I would like to quote from the um, pamphlet I put out at the time to refresh your memory. In the month of November 1993, the island territories of Seba and St. Eustatius met in The Hague with representatives of the Dutch government. They came to an understanding as to how the Crown Dependency status for Seba and St. Eustatius would look like. In Dutch, this status is referred to as Koninkrijks Eiland. Here are some of the highlights of how Seba would be governed under a new Crown Dependency status. The release following the meeting refers to some of the changes in the relations between Seba and the Netherlands. This option is now being presented to you for your vote on November 5, 2004, and the undersigned I would highly recommend that you vote for option A. The Netherlands, Seba and St. Eustatius on November 25, 1993 issued a joint declaration after a political agreement concerning a future status of Crown Dependency. The most important conclusions from that agreement are the government of the islands of uh, Seba and St. Eustatius shall consist 
of an island council and a governor. The island uh, council consists of a minimum of five and a maximum of seven members. The island council shall elect its chairperson from among the council. The executive council shall exist of a minimum of two and a maximum of three commissioners. And it goes on explaining the various uh, uh, relationships that, that we will have with the Dutch. Um, the, the referendum, as I said, was successful. Uh, we, 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 we did a, a, a thorough job. It was my responsibility as Commissioner of Constitutional Affairs to inform you properly. We brought in experts to explain uh, the various uh, options that were being presented to you. Uh, we also issued um, a, a pamphlet, a, a folder then in, in English, Dutch and Spanish so that everyone that was going to vote would understand what, uh, what it was all about. And the relationship, for example, that was explained, option A, was explained to the Spanish voters. I only happen to have this one here available at the moment, so I will read it in Spanish. Um, ¿Qué significan estas opciones? A. Ah, relaciones constitucionales directas con Holanda. Esta opción significa que Saba saldrá de las Antillas Holandesas y logrará una relación directa con Holanda. Una relación directa puede tomar muchas formas. Unos e ejemplos son, uno, integración completa, dos, una corona de pendencia y tres, estatus aparte como quien arrugó. En cualquier caso, significará que no habrá ningún gobierno central entre el gobierno local en Saba y ese de Holanda. So in other words, there will be no uh, central government between Saba and Holland, so you can ignore those people who are saying that the central government is going to be replaced uh, in Kralendijk to replace Willem Saab. Uh, Mr. Kamp, uh, in an interview just last week, he said Saba will have direct relations with Holland. Of course, Holland is going to assume all of the responsibilities of the federal government, which are more than 400 areas of responsibility, of which only 12 are half-heartedly carried out for SABA by the central government. So all of those hundreds of areas that were never taken care of by the Netherlands until it's for SABA, Holland will have to take care of. It doesn't matter if Holland has certain things on Bonaire, on Stacia, SABA, or as the case may be, many things will be centered in The Hague. Uh, the, the thing is that Holland will be responsible to carry out those areas of responsibility. Uh, and it says here further, Saba atenderá tantos asuntos suyos que puede ser posible y compartirá la responsabilidad para otras áreas con Holanda. La posibilidad se queda para que Saba cooperará con las otras islas de Aruba en una base voluntaria, la gente de Saba retendrá su nacionalidad holandesa. And that last sentence, I think, is, is very important because the, 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 the people of this island and those who have come to this island from countries in the region and elsewhere who have made Saba their home, who have made large investments here, they feel comfortable with the Dutch passport uh, and they want that to continue. The Whippon Party, the Orange Party that I represent can assure you that we will continue um, along the path as indicated by you. In 2004, uh, the other party that is running for office, they voted for status quo even though uh, they realized or they should have realized that Curacao had decided they wanted to go on their own. St. Martin had decided years before they wanted to go on their own and Aruba uh, decided years ago already and, and got a separate status. The, the truth of the matter is that the politicians of those islands don't want us. They are too busy taking care of their own problems. Politicians from Saba have to see to it that Saba <clears throat> gets the best possible position it can with the Dutch. And that is what I did when I was commissioner and that is what the present commissioner of constitutional affairs and the present government, which is still the Whippon government, have been doing. There have been lengthy <coughs> negotiations with the Dutch. 